My first physics book. My first physics book. My first physics book is written for parents who do not know about physics and who have children who ask a lot of questions relating to physics. Why do things fall to the earth? And why doesn't the moon fall? Why does the balloon stick to the wall like a magnet? Why do I get a shock sometimes when I touch the doorknob? What is electricity? And what is an electron? Why do magnets stick to each other? And why do they repel? How big is an atom? How big is the sun? How big is our galaxy? If you have children who ask such questions, you are fortunate. Hopefully, this book will fire up their thinking to ask more questions about other fields. This book puts mechanisms to concepts like inertia and momentum, gravity, electricity and light, and illustrates their characteristics. This short story introduces the atom, its electron and proton and illustrates how they interact with each other. It shows how motion is relative and how motion of electrons causes electricity in wires and communication waves in air. It describes how magnets work and how size is also relative. It shows we are in the middle of the large range between the atom and the universe. All of these concepts take place in the context of a story. The story is about a boy who becomes charged emotionally when he loses his heart. On his quest to find his heart, he goes through many electrifying adventures. He encounters others who have also lost their heart. At first, repelled by them, he later joins them in his adventure to find his heart. The boy realizes that his heart was as well longing for him. Content again, the boy continues his journey through the universe and discovers how vast it is and how small he is. Hi, my name is Hydrogen. One day, when I did something very bad and I got very sad, my mom told me that I lost my heart and that I need to find it again to be content. Without my heart, my mom started calling me Electron because my behavior shocked her. It shocked her more than she was shocked the last time when she tried to fix the electric kettle. My heart's name is Proton. Although my heart is much, much smaller than me, it fills me up and keeps me content, like a filled balloon. Without my heart, I am like a balloon which loses air, blowing off steam and blowing everyone away. My mom compares me to a hair dryer. My mom says that my heart is as well charged with emotions, longing to have me back with the attractive powers of a magnet or a vacuum cleaner. My mom says that once I find my heart, I will feel happy like a balloon again. So I packed up and left to look for my heart. I walked slowly away, blowing off steam, turning around faster and faster, until I was turning so fast, I was like a propeller. Then I started to turn the other way, faster and faster until I was round like a ball, just like the sun. When I approached another boy who had also lost his heart, he ran away from me. To be honest, I didn't like him either and ran away from him as well. I heard that my lost heart was also looking for me spinning around and running in circles just like me. My mom told me that when I find my heart, I will be so happy 
that I will dance with her and unite with her. Then to make sure it's not all just a dream, I will go to sleep with her. In the morning, when you wake up still with your heart, then you know that you have really found it. I landed on a balloon with many other boys and girls with lost hearts. We were all blowing off steam. As we approached another balloon, I searched for my lost heart, but all I saw were others with lost hearts, and we separated. Then our balloon approached a wall filled with lost hearts that all of us on the balloon were very attracted to, but we could not jump over as there was no space to jump over into. I landed on the carpet for luck and ended up on the finger of a boy who eventually touched a metal doorknob. Before I knew it, zap, I shot across the air and landed in a sea of swimming boys and girls with lost hearts. A bee called Metal buzzed by and landed on the doorknob. I jumped on it and it flew me around before it threw me off. I felt like a maple tree seed flying through the air. As I was flying, I was twirling and blowing off steam in all directions like a sprinkler, spraying across the street to the neighbors across the street called the Antenna Family, complained. I landed with a spray of other boys and girls in a stream and down we flowed all in a line. I couldn't stop as I was continually pushed from behind. We all ended up in a lake and then in a hydropower generating station where they generated electricity. We were ushered and pushed along a thick power line then along a thinner one until we reached a house and found ourselves in a battery charger being pushed into a battery. When the battery was full, we started our long march. It was like our swim down the river current. Someone turned a switch and we were suddenly switched to flow through a light bulb. It was beautiful. We made light light of all colors. We were told that other times we might get to go through a racing car to make it run or any electric machine to make them turn. Making light was very enlightening. Trains of all the same length with all the same number of wagons called photons all going at the same speed, the speed of light which is very, very fast. The difference between one train and the next was the different wagons they pulled. Some trains pulled low, long wagons, like plates. Others pulled short, tall wagons, like tall glasses, which carried a lot more energy than the shallow wagons. As the wagons got shorter, they got taller, and they changed color from red to orange to yellow to green to blue and to violet. All the colors of the rainbow when the sunshine shines through the rain. One day I happened to see a lost heart. As always we both stopped and looked at each other. We recognized each other and we were so happy that we started to dance. It was like being born. We finally found each other. I was so happy that I jumped into a river and I let myself be carried away. I could not stop. I couldn't stop until I landed on a rock on the side. Then I couldn't move. I stayed there like a rock, unable to move. I could have stayed there a long time, but for luck a friend rolled down the hill and pushed me back into the river. He told me that he had been bored sitting on top of the mountain until 
for luck he was pushed off. Once moving, always moving, till stopped. Once stopped, always stopped, till pushed to move. That's the law of motion and movement called inertia and momentum. Like an apple that stays on the tree until the wind blows it off and like it keeps falling until it hits the ground. I asked my mom, why is it that the apple falls to the ground? She told me that angels from the family called gravity were blowing down at us from above. They were at the edge of the universe, blowing everything to the center. My brothers and me wanted to see if this was really true. We took a cannon and shot one of our friends straight up into the air. Sure enough, like mom told us, he fell back down. When we shot him out toward our neighbor on the other side of the street, he went up and flew quite a distance away from us, landing on our neighbor's front porch. Then we shot him out so far that he never landed. But he never went away either. He circled us like the sun circles the earth we live on. The blowing angels on the edge kept on blowing him back to us while he kept on going away from us. Someone protested very loudly. Hey, did I hear what you just said? That the sun circles the earth? Huh, my dad told us that the sun doesn't really orbit around the earth. It just seems that way because we are seeing it from the earth. He said if we go to the sun and see it from the sun's point of view, we will see that the earth actually circles the sun. He said that there are as many points of view as viewpoints. So we flew out far, far away from the sun and saw it from another viewpoint. From that far, far away viewpoint, the earth moves in a wavering line and does not go around anything at all. So in the end, all viewpoints have their truth. My mom told me that while I was searching for my heart, my heart was also searching for me, like a vacuum cleaner sucking up everything, or like a magnet clinging on to nails. Or like a compass, my heart added. All lost hearts face the same direction together because they are all similarly emotionally charged. When they get stuck in such a position and stay that way, they act like magnets. Any magnet that wants to face any other direction than the others is repelled by all the others and is forced to turn. Like soldiers, all lined up. I became part of a very big magnet in a battery charger. One day, as I was pushing in boys and girls with lost hearts into the battery, I recognized you in the line and was able to sneak into the battery when no one was looking. I followed you till you noticed me and then we reconnected. My mom said that I was a very big boy, but like motion, size is as well relative. It all depends on the point of view. When I asked her how big the universe was and how big I was, she told me that I was one of the smallest things there was in the universe. She said that the balloon that I was rubbed off on and stuck to was as big from my point of view, as the earth was for the boy holding that balloon, and that a virus on an orange is like a boy on the earth, or like the earth in a galaxy of stars. I asked, how big is the universe? She replied that if the boy's brain holding that balloon was the size of the universe, each of his brain cells 
would be like a galaxy. There are as many brain cells in his head as galaxies in the universe. And there are as many atoms in each brain cell as stars in each galaxy. You are hydrogen, the smallest atom in the universe. Yet you make up most of the universe and you shall grow into all other atoms that make up everything in the world.